Grow My Cleaning Company teaches owners of cleaning companies just like you how to grow your company, make more money, and finally take charge of your financial future and your life. This podcast is about automating and creating systems that give you time and money freedom so you can grow like crazy without losing control. Since this is totally free, if you're getting tons of value, want to support us and make sure that you get more of the good stuff, subscribe, rate, and review to this podcast today. Now, on to the show. Cleaning Nation, super excited to talk with you guys. Um, today we are going to talk about something super, I don't know if it's sexy or not. You guys also let me know in the chat or, uh, give me some feedback if you like it. We're going to talk about the successful growth mindset. We spend so much time talking about tactics and systems and processes and what to do and how to build a business. And that is all super fun, but without the right mindset, um, it's, it's not going to get you very far. Actually, a, a bad mindset can overcome just about as good of a system as you want. So I, or as you like, so I wanted to jump in on that. Um, and as we go, Hey, Jason Johnson in the house, a guy with a very strong and Kim. I like that. They checked in together from Florida, uh, which is a big deal for them. Cause I think they're, I don't think I know they're from Alaska. So they are about as far as you can get from their hometown without leaving the country. Welcome guys. Sydney's in the house. Good to see you sister. Um, so you know what? I want to share a story. I, I share with our elite, uh, family on our last call. And I want to share with you guys to help give some context and then we'll jump in. So I, um, in addition to obviously coaching and helping you guys, I also invest in my own education. I'm constantly learning. And, and for the last 25 years I've owned business, I've always been in masterminds and invested in my own uh, education. Hey, Marlon, good to have you, buddy. And the, the, the higher levels I kind of coach at and seek coaching at and, and hang out with in terms of successful people, the more I find that mindset's an issue. And I remember uh, the group that I'm in now has a lot of focus on mindset. And I started, for those who can't see me, arms crossed, just kind of feeling and thinking like Richard Heflin in the house. Good to have you. Uh, just feeling and thinking like this won't work for me. Or not that it won't work for me. Eh, maybe that it wouldn't work for me, right? I mean, I remember years ago, I used to think it's silly. And then I thought, you know, oh, this is just woo-woo stuff. Hey, Katie Kazam, first live video. Great to have you. And for all of those of you that are listening or watching uh, recorded, um, just go to growmycleaningcompany.com to figure out how to get on these things live. It's always a lot more fun when we can ask and answer questions and hang out together. So we love uh, our podcast folks, love our uh, uh, YouTube video folks, but the live folks, uh, we get to have a little bit more. It's a lot more fun when we can talk as opposed to me just talking at you. So um, I remember in my younger years, I just thought that was kind of woo-woo and it was like enough of the, you know, how you should think and all this sort of stuff. Just tell me what to do. And the older I got, the more I realized how short-sighted that was. And then I kind of got to the point where I understand that, but I'm just not that kind of guy, right? I need, um, I just need, you know, concrete stuff to do. And it just, over the last six months, I've kind of started going, okay, well maybe it could work for me. And then it could definitely work for me. And I started realizing it's the most important thing that we've got. So I've actually kind of gone through my own transition on this understanding just how important the mindset is. And we're going to talk about exactly why. So a lot of you guys, uh, and I know this because I talked to you day in and day out, are still, you're doing everything that you know how to do. You're working your tail off. You're searching the internet, watching all the YouTube videos, just like this one, if that's where you're coming from, listening to podcasts. You're all over Google, learning everything that you can, but you're still stuck. You're not getting results. The problem with that is there is this one thing that we're going to talk about, which is your mindset and a successful growth mindset that is the difference between being the guy or the gal that always seems to succeed, no matter what. Bad ideas, good ideas, bad economy, good economy, no matter what, you may be that kind of guy or gal that just always lands right side up, right? Always kind of figures it out or not. And that really has to do with your mindset. And the reality is, um, if you don't have this one thing, you are more likely to be in that camp of just no matter how good the idea, just nothing ever seems to work. And we've got the right success mindset. It's the opposite. It, it kind of works out to be where whatever uh, endeavor you make always seems to work out well. So <clears throat> I'm going to jump into a bunch of kind of right and wrong mindsets that are going to uh, kill your business or uh, help your business. And the cool thing is there, there's no such thing as no mindset, right? You can't just say, I don't care about mindset. That is a mindset of not caring about mindset. And whether you believe in it or like it or care, it's going to have an impact, right? So the beautiful thing is there is no such thing as I don't have a mindset. You, that is a mindset. So we want to make sure that we help you know what the right mindset looks like and the wrong mindset looks like so you can adopt the right ones. And then the successful strategies can be like gold for you. But if your mindset is poor, uh, it's not going to help you. Richard says mindset's key. You can't soar like an eagle if you think like a turkey or even hang around with turkeys. You couldn't be more right, Richard. Um, so... 
a, a lot of times I get and a lot of this is these internet marketers out there, these gurus that are like, Oh, you know, give me a bunch of money and I'll give you the secrets to this or the secrets to that. Um, the reality and, and that, which leads us to kind of believe like, Oh, if I just found the secrets, if I just knew this one secret thing, then I would build my business. But that is kind of like a hope and dream mindset. Like, because again, we don't want to work or do the work of growing or becoming different people or growing as entrepreneurs. So we want, we want to think we want to believe, right? It's easy. Those are the easiest people to sell as the people that want to be sold, but we want to believe if there was just one magic word or conversation or, or advertising medium or way I could do it, that I could just run a great business, then everything would be great. And that's just not the reality. So we want to get away from that. If I just find the secrets mindset, that's what I'm lacking in into the reality of all the tools in the world. And again, there are some definitely tips and tricks having done this for 20 years. I've made so many mistakes and found um, hundreds of ways not to succeed. And there are definitely distinct ways that succeed and work versus don't. That said, all that information, all those tools in that box aren't going to do you any good if we don't change you first. I'm constantly telling my elite folks, my millionaire mastermind folks, um, that first and foremost, we're going to change you as the owner. And once that change is made, then we can change your business. But everyone wants to change on the outside in. Like, right, if I just had a rich business, then I'd be, or a successful business, then I'd be a better leader. I'd be this. If I could just be bigger, it, it works the exact opposite. Once we change who we are, the outflowing of that is our business. The business is the mirror that we just look into, right? You can't, you know, draw on the mirror if you don't like what you see. You've got to change who you are. And that's how businesses work. So, the next piece is, and this is probably the most heartbreaking, and I get this at least once a week, guys and gals that own cleaning companies that aren't getting the results that they want, and instead of coming face to face with the reality of what I'm doing and the way I'm doing it and the way I'm looking at life isn't working, they'll say things to themselves and even to me like, I'm so committed to this, I'm never going to give up, I know it's going to work, it has to work. There's no way I can work 50 hours a week or 80 hours a week or 100 hours a week and have this fail, I won't let it. That's a good start, right? That kind of commitment and that high commitment is really important, right? If you're mildly interested, it can be hard to grow. So that commitment is absolutely a good start and a good piece of the puzzle. The problem is the mindset and beliefs that got you to where you are are almost never the mindset and beliefs that are going to get you to where you want to go or to the next level. So you, we've got to get out of that. It will work because it has to or because I need it to. And kind of that stick my head in the, in the sand and ignore it kind of issue and really go, if what I'm doing got me where I'm at and I want to be somewhere else, I better do something else, right? So that mindset of curiosity and coachability and commitment <clears throat> is going to allow you to change and grow. Whereas a mindset of it's going to work because it has to, or I'll just work my way out of this. Even, you know, if this got me where I'm at, I'll work twice as hard and get, get further, um, has <clears throat> kind of some diminishing returns. So we really want to make sure we've got a mindset of reality and understanding that just because we need it to work or we desperately want it to work or we've done everything we can and we feel like it's only fair and it should work, those all may be true, but that's that's not going to help you. So we've got to kind of take a sobering look at what we're doing and, and how we're approaching it and the, the, the tactics that we use and the mindset that we approach it with. And if that's not working, just hoping our way isn't going to work. And it's so sad to see folks, you've got to do something different. Um, that said, um, Ramon, welcome, my friend. Good to have you. Um, the next thing is, and that kind of, that, you know what, that goes to the very next belief that will kill you as well. You know, the, if I, you know, I, I want to get the help that I want, but I don't want to pay for it. Right. Which is, I found the most expensive part of business for me has been the things I, the, the lost opportunity, right. When I, gosh, when I first had my cleaning company and I really was just using one marketing thing and I did okay with it. I spent two and a half years building that thing and we tripled it. But had I known some of the other things, we could have 10x it, right? And it cost me in not having a hiring system and having all the talents I needed and understanding that was a need that killed it. So there are really, I found the biggest cost that we have oftentimes isn't the money that we spend. Sometimes it's the money we don't spend. When we tolerate, I don't have a system to get the right customers to come to me. Um, that can kill you. Or I don't have a system to get the right employees to come to me, or I don't know what the rules I want to play by. I don't know what my core values are. Or I don't know how to bid, or I don't know if I'm profitable, or I think I'm unprofitable, but I'm afraid if I raise prices, I'll lose it. All that sort of stuff and not getting the commitment to make change can kill you. So a lot of times the biggest cost I found in opportunity is lost time, or I'm sorry, in business is lost time and lost opportunity. So I really want to encourage you to get what you need. Um, like for advertising, for example, 
Um, when people ask me what my budget is, I'll go, well, it depends on if it works, right? Um, if I spend $500 on advertising, it doesn't get me any qualified leads. That was really expensive. But if I spend $50,000 on advertising and I get enough qualified leads to bring me in half a million dollars worth of business, that was really cheap advertising. So I really want to encourage you guys when it comes to investing in your business, whether it is professional development or advertising or uniforms or whatever it is, don't just look at the cost of the thing that you're considering. Look at the cost of doing nothing, which oftentimes can be 1x, 2x, 5x, 10x the cost of making a change. Richard says, we're all self-made, millionaire, broke. It's our choice, our mindset, and our choice to say action, uh, take action or stay still. That is so insightful, Richard. The reality is so many of us, especially the unsuccessful people, want to externalize, right? Whatever the problem is, that we want to put it outside of ourselves. If only I lived in a better city, if my customers weren't, weren't so cheap, if employees wanted to work, if I was taller, shorter, rich or poor, whatever the excuse is, one is as good as another. But it starts with the if, and then it ends with something that's outside of your control. That is an externalizing mindset, and it is almost impossible to overcome, right? It's just even with all the systems and processes we teach, and we only accept people that have are willing to uh, exhibit a positive mindset to work with because if no matter what I say, your mindset is that won't work or if I had this or if it wasn't for that or, you know, there's some sort of excuse other than that's what I need to do. Great. The flip side of that is when we internalize and take responsibility for everything, just like Richard said, and go, if whatever the business I have, I created. So the, there's good and there's bad. That's a double-edged sword. The good news is, you can absolutely own and take credit, so to speak, for everything in your business. When you're successful, don't let anyone tell you that they did it, right? You did it and you know that you did it. And that's one of the most fulfilling things about having a successful business. The flip side is when there's an employee you don't like or when the employees or customers are treating you and your business a certain way and we want to blame them, well, they're jerks or they're this or that. Or Guess what? Who's the one that allowed, that signed up these jerks? Who allows them to continue being in your universe? Who can, allows them to continue in their behavior without reper, repercussions or consequences? So the reality is, and again, it, it, at first it's it's a little scary, but if you stick with me, it turns a corner. So when we start, it's like, wow, if my business is failing and we want to be brutally honest with ourselves and you do want to be brutally honest, that is what is required of an entrepreneur. We're going to go every single failure in this business is exactly the guy or gal that's looking at me in the mirror every morning, 100%, which sucks, right? Because if we make bad mistakes, we got to take responsibility for them. It's so much easier mentally and emotionally, intellectually to blame the world, the other people, the it's not fair, right? Whatever you want to blame. One, again, one excuse is as good as another. We're making excuses. But once we have that magic key of, wait a second, I control everything. All of the stuff I brought into existence by the choices that I've made and the commitments I've made and what I followed through on, that can actually set you free. Because if the truth is, it's because there's no one in your, your town that wants to work, well, then there's really not, if that's the reality of the situation, there's really nothing you can do, right? So there is a lot of freedom when you realize every single success or failure in this business comes down to the choices that I've made. The beauty of that is you can make new choices and have a totally different outcome. Um, so again, it's heady because we have to take full responsibility, but it's exciting because we can actually change things where when we're externalizing and blaming the world, there's nothing we can do about it. When we're internalizing, um, we're the master of our own dom domain. And the frustrating, sad thing is where there's so many people who go, you don't know, my, there's no one that wants to work in my town. And I'll literally have coached someone in that same town with 50, 60 great employees not the truth, or people are cheap in my town. Well, guess what? You are getting the people that you attract, both employees and customers. So we've got to ownership, own, take ownership of our decisions, of our reality, of our present circumstance. And if we don't like it, we need to adopt a mindset of change. And that is what we spend a lot of our time doing with our elite folks is helping them understand the right way to look at business to actually make a change. Because if you keep doing what you're doing, you keep getting what you've been getting. So that whole, you know, it'll all work out. It has to work out. I'll get this done. The reality is you will get exactly what you, what you accept. Not one iota more, not one iota less. And if we just bumble around in the earth saying, well, um, I'm just going to keep hustling. It'll, it'll, it'll work itself out. It'll get better on its own. Um, that makes us feel better moment by moment, day by day until it all catches up and it doesn't. And we're out of business or we shut it down or we, we, um, our family leaves or all sorts of terrible things happen. So make sure that instead of just saying it'll work out, we internalize and go, everything that I've done, successes and failures are 100% because of the actions and attitudes that I've done. Um, and it's scary at first, but it can absolutely free you. So, okay, the reality is 
what happens to you, people not showing up to work, customers quitting, not uh, they don't pay, whatever, that belief that that dictates whether I succeed. Some people feel they got lucky or I started at the right time. And certainly there's some luck in it short term, right? Just like poker. If you put me in a, in a hand of one hand of poker with the best poker player in the world, absolutely possible I win, right? 50-50 <laughs> chance I have better cards that I just stay in no matter what. But if you put me in a poker game with that, the best poker player in the world for a thousand hands, he's going to take all my money. There's no question. So certainly luck has something to do with it short term in terms of we can get a little boost from luck. We can get kicked in the nuts by luck, but that can only kind of really affect us in a major way short term. We go long term. It really comes down to the fact that how you respond to anything and everything dictates how you the results that you get. So. Again, when you say I've been doing this for five years and I'm still cleaning or I'm way, way behind where I thought I would be. Once you own that and go how I respond to that truth that I'm not where I want to be dictates how you succeed. When you start making excuses or, or, or rationales to why and it's not your fault and somebody else, you're going to get that result. And when you go, hey, the mindset and systems and processes I've adopted have got me this result. If I want that result, I just need to upgrade my systems and, and processes and mindset. That's it. So the reality is um, we believe sometimes that we can only lead or grow our company depending on how we feel, right? A lot of times it's external st stimulus and it's nasty little brother's feelings, right? So when an employee quits, we feel like, uh, or it doesn't show up and we've got to clean or hustle or whatever. Sometimes we feel like, oh, I can't lead or I have to, you know, I, I can't be, I can't love on the rest of my employees or I can't be the leader I want. We, we kind of allow circumstances not only to change us globally and make excuses, but in that moment, sometimes we go, well, I can't lead. I can't be the leader I need to be because I'm so, so upset. The reality is real leaders are able to control and choose their state and stay in that state so powerfully that their entire team absorbs it, right? So <laughs> uh, confession time, right? We do, I do a lot of coaching on these lives uh, for our paid customers. You know, a lot of what I'm doing is talking and don't tell anyone, but I don't know, 18 and a half percent of the time, like I don't feel like it. <laughs> I, I'd rather just be on my couch watching some stupid TV show, but I come on and I intentionally uh, and, and purposefully pick a state and I try to have a state that is powerful and energetic and has you guys go, holy crap, I know I can do this, right? That my energy, my belief and my certainty is so powerful, it flows to you guys. And that's something I want you to be able to do as leaders. That said, um, you've got to be able to choose that ability. And that is a skill that we, that we try. Right. And you guys, and the cool thing is if you guys are like, Oh, I can't do that. I guarantee you can't anyone that's ever been, <laughs> been on their way to a party with their friends or a gathering and in the car, they get in a fight with their spouse and you're ready to just, Arr! and then you walk into the party, you're like, Hey, everybody, <laughs> right? we all have that ability to change our state. And, uh, we just don't exercise that enough. So that's another mindset that we've got is I have a bad day. I have a good day. I couldn't lead my team. We couldn't have this because of my, my state takes care of me or controls me. We need to move that to, I control my state and my not only, and here's the, here's the scary thing, guys and gals, not only do we have to control our state, but you'd be shocked how your state as a leader controls and influences your team. And what gets really, really scary is when you start having management, um, you know, if I come with this kind of a state that's powerful and positive, my management's going to pick up 80% of that. And then the people I, that are under them are going to pick up 80% of that. The problem comes when I come in, kicking the dog, cursing, blaming the world, making excuses, talking crap about our customers, my management's going to pick up 200% of that. And our, our people are going to pick up 200% of that. So again, that belief that some days are good and some days are bad and you just roll with the punches is not serving you. A real leader is going to say, I choose the state that I'm going to have, which influences my customers, my employees, my managers, my vendors, the entire community. I get to, you, as leaders, it's a lot of pressure, but we have massive impact on the people that we do. And I got to tell you, the more attractive your state is and the more powerfully, powerfully you can hold it, even when you don't feel like it, the bigger your influence and impact is going to be and your circle of influence is going to start expanding. So um, let me give you the last one. And this is probably the most insidious mindset that can just eat your lunch is, I will do this tomorrow or even worse later when I can, I will make this change when I can afford it, when I'm ready, after I've moved, once my kid's older, when my friend's uncle's dog's friend tells me it's okay, um, that will eat your lunch. As leaders, as entrepreneurs, our job is to take the chaotic world around us that exists and mold it into something organized and rational. And the way we have to do that is have belief and certainty and, and be decisive. So that leadership laissez-faire of I'll do it when I get to it or it'll get done or it won't. 
um, will just absolutely, it, it's insidious because it won't kill you today and you won't even notice it, but tomorrow and the next day and years will eat your lunch. So I want to encourage you, if anyone's going, holy crap, I really have gotten into some bad mindset habits or some of those things that Mike was saying are, are eating my lunch and now I'm starting to see these are the reasons why. I want to encourage you, if that is you, today is the day to take action, period. Um, we talk to folks all the time, decisiveness and commitment and resourcefulness and coachability. These are the keys of the people having coached hundreds and hundreds of people. The ones that come with those qualities, those traits, decisiveness, when they decide and know they're going to fix it, they fix it right now. They succeed. The people that are like, eh, I don't know. I'm going to try later. Um, from a leader standpoint, me trying to help them, is like dragging them to their own success. So if that is you, if today is the day you say, my mindset is not where I need it to be. Even if I had the right systems and processes and tools, I don't know that I as a leader am, am where I need to be to get there. Today is the day to get started, to take change, to go, I decided on where we are. This is being recorded the 19th of September, My actually my son's fourth birthday. Uh, if today is the day, take action. I'm going to give you something you can do. And if that doesn't work, don't give up and just go, well, I'm going to go do something else. Find something. Go to grow, get started, growmycleaningcompany.com. In addition to all the, the resources and tools and everything that we have, um, there is our five shifts video that you need to make to really, you know, it's probably half mindset and half, uh, it's the best 50 minutes I've gotten training, uh, growingcleaningcompany.com go there, sign up for the webinar. It's so funny. We'll, we'll advertise this on, on Facebook is this free on demand training and people will be texting in the, the chat, you know, the Facebook chat and the ad, is this a scam? Should I do this? What do you think? Can anyone have, has anyone gone through this? It is literally a free webinar. There's no, like, <laughs> there's nothing that you can even like, I, there's nothing, there's nothing for sale. There's no, you know, just so you guys, Oh, he's going to sell me. No, there's nothing for sale on it. Um, and it just makes me, it almost, it makes my heart hurt. It makes me want to cry when people are so not committed that they go, they, before they even God forbid, click on a, uh, an educational thing and invest 50 minutes in their own business. They have to get someone else to tell them it's going to be okay. So please, please, please let me encourage you. If, if you are committed to having a mindset of success and to really taking charge and owning your business and its success, go to growmycleaningcompany.com. Take advantage of the tools there. The thing I love about this podcast and these videos and these live events are we have the opportunity to change people's world. I get so many, so much feedback like, oh my gosh, Mike, I'm such a fan of blah, 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 blah. It's, it's great. And then I go, great. What actions have you took? What have you done? How has your business changed? And so many times I hear it hasn't. I haven't done any of it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, right? There's that, it'll get better. Tomorrow, a week from Thursday, um, I really want to encourage you. If and if today's not the day, take your time. Wait till you're committed. But if you are committed, you go. I have to have the results that I want. I'm not going to kind of bumble around in the dark anymore. Go to GrowMyCleaningCompany.com. Get the tools you need. I don't. Even, there's nothing for sale there. Um, I don't think there's anywhere you can buy anything. We just try and help you guys. But again, uh, when it is time to invest in your company, that's fine. The big thing is commitment and decisiveness and resourcefulness and coachability and all that good stuff. So if today's the day, go to Grow My Cleaning Company, make that change, let us help you. That's what we do all day, every day. It is our honor and our pleasure to do it. And we will see you there. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you're fired up, ready to grow, and want to see if you have what it takes to work with us at Grow My Cleaning Company, here's what I want you to do right now. Go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. That's growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk to book an appointment to speak with me personally. I'm going to jump on the phone with you to get you crystal clear on where you are now, where you want to be, and how to get you there. Don't walk around in the dark any longer. If you are serious about growing your cleaning company, it's time to finally get the systems in place that you need to grow. We've helped hundreds of owners of cleaning companies not only grow their business and their personal freedom, but give back to their community as well. If that's what you're looking for, head over to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk and book a time to talk with me personally. I can't wait to get to know you and your business.